I basically buy food for the lab. So I think that Alan keeps me around for my Costco membership. So the first project that I'm working on is basically how social influences will change our perception of distance. And specifically, I'm looking at how eye gaze will change perception of distance. So when you're looking at someone, there's sort of this notion that that person is closer to you. Also, I am in charge of participant money. So I guess they keep me around for that too. I'd say my number one job is to spend money. Um, but when I'm not buying equipment for the lab, I use motion tracking to look at how people um, reach out and grab objects. And specifically, uh, while I've been here, I've been most interested in um, how do people associate highly rewarding objects um, with movements. Hi, my name is Walter. My brain is in the knee. I'm the RA. I look at uh, past experience, so um, whether or not or how much experience you have with uh, particular types of video games, whether that influences how distractible you are in various visual search tasks, as well as whether or not uh, specific instructions can influence whether you are more or less distracted by uh, visual distractors. I study um, how people perceive the gaze of other people, um, the specific cues that we use to do that, uh, such as motion, luminance, um, and geometrical cues. Uh, another thing, another aspect of my research is, uh, recently has been looking at recurrence quantification analysis of eye movement behavior um, as a method for understanding how people uh, naturally scan through a scene. I've heard about Dr. Nicola Anderson talk about recurrence analysis of eye, of eye movements or scan paths. I basically take this concept one step further. This is the site of cognitive inspiration. Here I study what's known as meta cross recurrence fractal analysis. So not drinking beer. If the cerebral cortex is distracted, another part of the brain, the superior anterior temporal gyrus, will be activated. As such, I can compute meta cross-recurrent fractal dimension values and assign them to all the things in animals that we study. I use saccadic trajectories and ocular tracking technology to essentially infer one's cognitive state just by their eye movements. Uh, so for example, if I have a participant who is looking at their left visual field, I can infer about their cognitive state that they are not looking towards their right visual field. You know that makes no sense, right? More recently, I became Dr. Alan Kingstone's personal assistant, and I really love the new job because it's right up my alley keeping the bar lab running smoothly and everyone organized. It's also super inspiring to come to work every day and see the projects that the grad students are working on. They come at questions about brain attention, in really creative ways and we also have a lot of great technology and really fun toys to play with. <laughs>